This week's art lessons are all dedicated to pop art. So we are going to make this wise pop art owl since you guys are all growing up and getting so wise. Um, anyhow, so let's discuss materials. Uh, you'll want a black piece of paper if you have so you can mount your very colorful owl onto your black paper. Uh, you'll want a white piece of paper that you're going to actually draw on. You'll want um, some a glue stick, some markers, or color pencils, or crayons, um, or watercolor. Uh, you'll want some scissors, eraser, black sharpie marker, and a pencil. Okay, I think that's all we need. Yes, that's all we need. Okay, so I'm going to work in Sharpie so that you can see what I'm doing as I walk you through drawing our bird. And then, um, you know, you'll be able to do some outlining later on. Okay, so white paper lengthwise, so it's in portrait mode. And the first thing you're going to want to do is at the very top here, sort of at an angle, we're going to do sort of a very lightly curved shape like that and it's about the length of a finger or the width of a finger if I put my finger there or maybe about three inches or so and then from there we're gonna add this feathery ear thing I don't know what owls ears are called but I like to call it an ear and we're gonna do that on both sides okay and again, this is at a diagonal, okay, on purpose. We want it to have a diagonal. Um, and then we're going to come down this side and down this side, creating the body of our owl. So watch as I come down and then back up a little bit to create these sort of jagged, um, a jagged sort of body because of the feathers. Okay, so that's one side. And then on the other side, we're going to do the same thing essentially and there we go all right so the next step is going to be to add um, some details okay um, so right about mm, maybe from the top of the head down maybe about two inches is where we're gonna do a smaller curve right here sort of mimics this curve up here and that curve is sort of the base of the nose or the bridge of the nose and then it's going to come down to a curved point okay so curved point and from there we're gonna do what almost looks like the owl is wearing glasses so we're gonna add a curved line like that that goes all the way to one side of the owl and again another curved line like that that goes from here to here and we're going to do another one that's almost parallel and doesn't touch the very edge like this one does. Stops just a little bit before. Same thing on this side. And then we're going to come down with this one and curve almost like we have eyeglasses on our owl. So curve, curve. And then right here we'll add another line that then joins the bottom of the frame. Okay, so we've got that. Now inside of this shape, we're going to do a large, more than a half a circle. It's like a little bit more like half a oval, like that. And then another one inside. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Large, half, an oval and another large one inside of there all right and then in that space in the smaller half circle you're gonna do what looks almost like a teardrop okay and you'll do another little sliver like that on the nose area okay from there we're gonna start to add some details to our fur so right here above the nose and sort of eye area, we're gonna start to add some general furry, feathery looking things like that. And it's really loose, okay? It's not like some perfect up and down zigzag. Keep it loose, keep it, you know, keep it natural. And we're going to do that again, starting from over here and 
Again, sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're taller, but essentially it's gonna go all the way there. And then you can do one more up here and go into the ear and you do another short one sort of into the ear there. And here, it's sort of natural, but kind of jagged, okay? And then down here, we're gonna start making what almost looks like petals of a flower or leaf shapes, all right? So start with me. We're gonna use the outer shape of this section here coming down to that point, and then we're gonna come in with that shape, okay? And then you'll add your next piece and you'll net your next piece and you'll see how they are connected to one another. So the start of one becomes, the end of one becomes the start of the next one, if that makes any sense. And just remember when you get over here to the side, you wanna make sure that your edge pieces always kind of connect with what's happening, okay? So then you do it again, and you're just continuing to build these feathered shapes that are kind of connected and all flowing together. And like I said, when you get to the edge pieces, you wanna make sure that you always <clears throat> connect those so it kind of makes sense. And then just keep doing this over and over again. It's gonna appear like it's overlapping like feathers <clears throat> are overlapping to kind of connect and add some naturalness um, and some realness to your project. So again, just keep going. And you can do this with a pencil or with a Sharpie or pencil and then Sharpie later. together almost to the bottom and you may or may not see the tips of the last sort of row of feathers here in the back for me, I'm gonna kind of crop it off, like sort of just like chop off the tip of each feather there because that will make it look, again, more naturalistic. Okay, so we now have drawn our bird. And all that's left, my friends, is for us to start coloring together. Now, I am gonna use these markers here. And if you notice on mine, you'll see that um, I didn't color anything in solid. I sort of did a scribbly up and down, you know, with the directionality of the feathers with my markers, purposely not filling it in solid because I thought that kind of had a nicer effect for fur, I mean for feathers, than just doing something supernaturally. Um, some of the things that I do want you to do um, for sure is you want to color this part of the owl eye in yellow. So that goes for both places. And then you wanna use your black marker to color in, oh, that's not black, that's purple. All right, you're gonna use your black marker to fill in the iris. Remember to leave that little shape there on purpose. That's what makes it look like it's just the light shining on the eyeball. So you'll wanna do that for both eyeballs both irises and then you'll also color in the nose using black marker and again leave that sliver that we drew leave it there so we can see it and then everything else is really up to you so I'm going to color a little bit with you and then I'm gonna let you do it all on your own Okay, so I'm gonna start with some turquoise. And even up here, it's really kind of a sketchy coloring situation that's happening. 
So I'm coming in here with this sort of aqua color and I'm doing this really lightly. I'm not pushing hard with my marker at all. I purposely want to be light as a feather as I'm working so that I can work my colors into that and it doesn't end up um, getting too, you know, too smeared or too dirty by mixing those colors. So I added a little neon in there and for the next layer and basically each layer of this top area I'm going to be blending sort of two colors together and it's okay that they come into what I've already done a little bit. So it's a controlled scribble. Let's just call it that. Okay. It's a controlled scribble um, because we want it to, you know, obviously you don't want to be doing this, <laughs> right? So just make sure you're sort of maintaining a little control in the midst of the chaotic scribble. Okay. And that kind of gives it a cool effect and it looks very pop art because of all the bright colors that are intermingling to one another. So really the only solid sections of color are the eyes and the nose or the beak. And let me do some red over here. Down this side. And then I'm going to do some violet on the tip. More like a magenta, like a violet, red violet. And then I'm just gonna go to town on the rest of it. Um, I did something a little bit more neutral in here. I did something with um, sort of the aqua color and like a little bit of gray. So if you want to do that, you can. It's okay for this part to be a little less white space. It's really feathers or glass on top of feathers if you treat it like, you know, like it's a, like if the owl was wearing glasses, so sort of making that just a little bit more solid and then you can choose to color your frame whatever color you want to color it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with my feathers now. And so what I'm gonna do, like for efficiency's sake, and it's kind of what you should do also, is while you're doing this, like say I'm using this magenta right now, so I'm just gonna jump around and use it in various places multiple times, and then come back in with new colors after I get this a little bit everywhere. So again, a controlled skip scribble going in an up and down motion, and that is in order to um, achieve some naturalness, some cool texture, some interesting surprises that happen accidentally instead of coloring it in like a coloring book, which we know that coloring goods are no good. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm not filling in completely solid. I kind of like that textural shape, but maintain an up and down motion, an up and down effect because those feathers are laying down on a, on a real owl. They would be laying down. Okay, and then you just come in with another color. Come in here with this blue color. And I'm gonna go everywhere with it. And this is, I'm going pretty fast, you guys. Like, and that's the beauty of not having to color it in solid is you can go fairly quickly with it and move around pretty quickly since you're doing a loose color. You know how Miss Jenkins does not like coloring books because I feel like it stunts creativity? That does not apply to you coloring your own drawing. When you're coloring your own drawing, Go at it, you know, go to town, color your little hearts out. It's very relaxing and very meditative. Um, but I definitely want you to try to draw your own stuff before you color it so that you're practicing drawing skills because that's that's how you become a better artist. And even if you don't think you, you know, you're going to pursue art later or that it's going to be a big part of your life, who doesn't want creativity, you know? I mean, in the real world, people with creative sides to them they do better for sure in the real world like it's it's really important to have 
creativity and it's a great way to problem solve and to come up with solutions to things that come up. So keep creating, my friends. Okay, so I'm going to stop here because I don't want to bore you watching me color for hours, but you can see the finished product. When it's completely finished, you would cut it out and you would glue it onto your black paper so that the bottom part of this paper here is totally flush with the bottom of the black paper and it just looks so good and so bright. It just really pops out on that black paper. If you don't have black paper, then just do any color, just anything that's gonna, you know, make it pop out instead of just the white background. Um, and that's all you guys. I am going to um, miss making art with you, but I look forward to us getting together again in the future. I miss you, I love you, and I can't wait to see what you do. Bye guys.